Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is always a healing system, a regenerating system designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. Our number today on the bright side, 844-236-6010. We welcome your calls. We want to hear from you. This is your this is your program. This is your health program. If you want to contribute to the conversation or if you just have a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is your number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, and you can order longevity products right off the website, or you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website or a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, earn all the tax benefits associated with having your own business right off your home office, right off your stamps, right off your gas mileage. Of course, you can also earn as much or as little money as you like, make your own hours, work out of your pajamas in your office, in your home office. It's perfect if you're a single mom or if you just want to stay home with the kids. One-time $25 fee. And, you, of course, you can just get your products at the wholesale price, too, if you don't want to start a business. For a one-time $25 fee, you can uh, just get longevity products at the wholesale price. Head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Or call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. And please check out our True Skin Health products if you're dealing with aging skin, accelerated aging, or acne blemishes, or hyperpigmentation, dark spots, melasma. You want to use retinol. It's the go-to active ingredient for dealing with skin lighting, for dealing with anti-aging, just as a general skin tonic. I use retinol twice a week. I use my Truth Retinol 5% Gel. It's made with 5% retinol, a whole bunch of lipophilic, premium, fat-soluble, active, stable vitamin C. If you've tried to use retinol in the past and haven't been able to because it was too irritating, you want to check out our Truth 5% Retinol Gel. Truth Retinol 5% Gel. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, water, oil, silicon, propylene glycol, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products, you can check them all out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. We've been talking polyphenols, phenolic acids, lignans, still beans, resveratrol, cinnamon, going phytonutrient here on The Bright Side. I you know, I, we talk a lot about nutrition, but there's a real case to be made for the power of non-essential nutrients like the bioflavonoids and the polyphenols that we've been talking about. They're non-essential in the sense that there's no blatant deficiency diseases that are associated with deficiencies in these things. That's kind of the definition of an essential nutrient, a, a nutrient without which you will suffer a deficiency disease. And there's no known deficiency diseases associated with these phytonutrients, but that doesn't mean they're not valuable. That doesn't mean they're not important. And it actually doesn't really mean they're not essential. They could very well be essential, and maybe we just don't notice. Or we blame 
our chronic degenerative diseases or our heart disease or our diabetes or uh, our subclinical scurvy on other nutrients when it really is the flavonoids or the phenols or the lignans or any of these phytonutrients that's actually missing. We're going to talk about the bioflavonoids here next week, and I'm very excited about that because those things are absolutely ridiculously powerful and medicinal and therapeutic. So in our last program, we were talking cinnamon, the super tasty, medicinal, and very good for you spice, loaded with minerals, zinc, iron, chromium. It's got the phenols, the, the phytonutrients that help thin the blood, protect blood vessels, and generally improve circulation and cardiovascular health. It can help support insulin activity, lower your blood sugar, because it amps up the taste of sugar. It can allow you to use less sugar without sacrificing the sweetness. It's got one of nature's highest ORAC values. ORAC, O-R-A-C, is a, a measurement of antioxidant power. It's a natural ana uh, anesthetic and analgesic. It's been used for dental pain. You can make your own cinnamon dental pain paste with a little bit of cinnamon and olive oil. Add some clove, which is really high in anesthetic. The anesthetic called eugenol, which is an active ingredient in many dental products. You can apply it right to your sore teeth or right to your gums. Cinnamon paste. Cinnamon clove paste. It's got vitamin B5, vitamin B3, vitamin B6. It's got the eye vitamins or the eye nutrients, I should say, that are found in many eye vitamin supplements, lutein, zeaxanthine. And it has a really fascinating phytonutrient, which is a phenolic acid that's got some very fascinating skin properties, skin health properties. It's called cinnamic acid. And this cinnamic acid, it's a polyphenol. It's very, very important. It's very, it's one of the most prized of all the polyphenols when it comes to skin care, when it comes to sun protection specifically. Cinnamic acid is found in red wine, citrus fruits, strawberries, cranberries. There's a little bit of olives and olive oil. And its most well-known source is cinnamon, from which it gets its name, cinnamic acid. It is a uh, at least partially responsible for the smell of cinnamon. If you smell straight cinnamic acid, it has kind of a slight cinnamony, cinnamony honey sort of fragrance, natural fragrance. And cinnamic acid is one of the most powerful of the polyphenols when it comes to anti-aging, when it comes to antioxidant properties, anti-inflammatory properties, and soothing properties as well. You can take a little bit of your cinnamon and mix it in with some oatmeal and make a mask, a nice soothing mask if you've got irritation or redness on your face. You can use it uh, in your bath water if you're dealing with some kind of skin irritation. Just straight cinnamon and oatmeal. Oatmeal is unbelievably helpful for dealing with skin rashes. It's actually the active ingredient in many, in many uh, over-the-counter products. But add some cinnamon in there. The cinnamic acid is super-duper soothing. And the most important property of cinnamic acid, the active, uh, one of the active ingredients in cinnamon, is its ability to absorb ultraviolet radiation from the sun. In fact, the most commonly used chemical sunscreen, the one that you'll find in 70 to 80% of sunscreens that you buy at the drugstore, the department store, or wherever you buy your sunscreens, the grocery store, the most commonly used chemical sunscreen active ingredient is a derivative of cinnamic acid. It's called octal methoxy cinnamate. Three words, octal methoxy cinnamate. Sometimes methoxy cinnamate is made into one word, but the, the phrase is octal methoxy cinnamate. Yes, I know it's a mouthful, but you want to get to know it because that is a really nasty chemical and it is the most popular and the most commonly used and the cheapest of all the sunscreens. And while cinnamic acid is completely non-toxic, it's a polyphenol, it's found in, you know, all over the, the, the vegetable kingdom and you don't have to worry about toxing out on, on cinnamic acid. Not so with octal methoxy cinnamate. And when I rip on sunscreens, that's one of the sunscreens I'm ripping on. And I did work with octal methoxy cinnamate in the pharmacy. I'd have to fill prescriptions with it. And I wore gloves and I wore a mask. And if I touch the stuff, I wash it off quickly. The same stuff you're rubbing on your babies. The same stuff you're rubbing on you if you're using a sunscreen. It is nasty stuff, octal methoxy cinnamate. If you were to drink it, you'd be in big trouble. Now, I know you're not drinking it if you rub it on your skin, but still, if something is that toxic when you're gonna drink it, it's probably something you don't wanna be rubbing on your skin, certainly not on thin skin and definitely not on babies. In fact, even doctors will tell you not to rub octal methoxy, thin, octal methoxy cinnamate on baby skin. Babies have notoriously thin skin and uh, your dermatologist your, or your physician or your baby doctor will say, no, don't use chemical sunscreens on, the skin's too thin. Well, if it's not good enough for your baby, it's not good enough for you. If it's gonna go through your baby skin, the chances are pretty good it's going through yours as well. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. Back 
on the bright side, got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. And we will get your calls at the bottom of the hour, as we always do. Please try to call in early so we can get to as many phone calls as possible at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or anything we're speaking about here today, success story, contribute to the conversation, questions about skin health formulations, about my true skin health products, my friend Dr. Drew just texted me here. Uh, about uh, he's using he's been using hey Dr. Drew how you doing buddy he's been uh, he's been using our truth retinol 5% gel now for probably six months or so and he says I use retinol every uh, after every shave three times a week it's now removing deep wrinkles and I've heard that many times before retinol is amazing stuff but the problem with retinol is you need high concentrations and retinol can be somewhat aggressive so skin companies don't want to put high concentrations. Well, as a pharmacist, I know about doses. This is what pharmacists specialize in. We specialize in dosing and we specialize in delivery. You only, in my opinion, a pharmacist is the best person to make skincare products. Not the doctor in the white coat who's not making, he's not in the lab. You think that doctor in your commercial is in the laboratory making products? No. He's calling a formulator. Well, the best formulator is going to be pharmacists because pharmacists study delivery of medicine and dosing. And when you put a skincare product on, you want it to do what a medicine does, i.e. work. That's the one thing skin health products or skincare products have in common with medicine. They're supposed to work, but they don't. We all know that because a cosmetic chemist is making your products, not a pharmacist. When I was in the lab and in, in my compounding pharmacy and somebody came in with eczema or somebody came in with dark spots or somebody came in with some other kind of skin condition, I couldn't mess around. They, they wanted a product that worked, and that's what my true skin health products are. They're derivatives of things I was making in the compounding pharmacy that I saw worked. That is vitamin A and vitamin C and a transdermal delivery matrix. And when I was making my products in the pharmacy, I wasn't putting surfactants and emulsifiers and preservatives and fragrances and fillers and water and silicon and oil. I was putting the active ingredient in and a transdermal delivery matrix. And now you can do this. You can have the same thing by checking out our True Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, cinnamic acid, love this stuff. It's got all kinds of wonderful properties for the skin. Later on, we're gonna talk about how it's a good exfoliating agent, similar to alpha hydroxy acids. The industrial world loves cinnamic acid because they can tweak the molecule a little bit and get a really cheap, inexpensive, very powerful sunscreen called OMC, technically octal methoxy cinnamate. I'm going to call it OMC instead of octomethoxy cinnamate because that's just hard to say. So OMC, also known as octanoxate. You'll probably see it on your sunscreen. If you have a sunscreen now, go grab it, look at the ingredient deck, and you'll see. Guaranteed, if it's a typical sunscreen, a cheapo sunscreen, you'll see octomethoxy cinnamate. Even the ones, the sunscreens that are clever enough or the sunscreen companies, uh, manufacturing companies that are clever enough to know about the toxicity of octomethoxy cinnamate, they'll sometimes put a little zinc oxide in there, which is good stuff. That's, that's what you're looking for on your sun protection product is zinc oxide. But they'll spike it with octomethoxy cinnamate. Oh, by the way, OMC only works on UVB, which is your burning ray, which is your vitamin D ray. It doesn't block UVA, which is your aging ray. And this is a very important distinction. And, you know, if you're using a, a sun protection product that only blocks UVB, you're not doing anything for wrinkles and aging. You're blocking burning, and that's great because you don't want to burn, but you're also blocking vitamin D. This distinction between UVA and UVB is, is becoming very problematic for the FDA and for sunscreen companies, and now you're starting to see UVA blockers, but they're still rare. And, by the way, the only UVA blocker of any note is something called oxybenzone, and that stuff is really toxic. I mean, OMC's toxic. But oxybenzone is really, really toxic. Along, it's similar in chemical structure to something called dioxane, which is one of the most poisonous substances known to man. So when you're using this UVA block, benzophenone they'll call it sometimes, got to be, I know these words are hard to say and they're hard to read, but you got to be ingredient readers. And these companies are, are depending on us not reading ingredients. 
So they don't care. They're, they're depending on us listening to Cindy Crawford or listening to the model or listening to the, the, the doctor in the white coat. They're depending on us not reading the ingredients. Read the ingredients, even if it's hard to pronounce. Benzophenone or oxybenzone are the only ultraviolet A blockers or, or screens. And they're really, or it is really toxic. That's why when you're making, when you're formulating these things, you can only use 0.1% or 0.2%. That's how toxic this stuff is. So anyway, OMC, octanoxate, octal methoxy cinnamate, is nasty stuff. It's a poster child, in my opinion, an iconic example of what is wrong with how we are told by dermatologists and other skincare professionals about how to use sun protection. We're advised by these guys, the, the dermatologists mostly, sometimes unfortunately skin estheticians who should know better. We're advised to slather the stuff on. They say three shaving cream blobs or something like that. Just ridiculous amounts. Slather it on. And their big complaint, dermatologists' big complaint about how people use sunscreens is they don't use enough. This is how stupid some medical professionals can be. They say you don't use enough. Completely oblivious to the toxicity of the stuff. And they say to keep, a, keep reapplying it. Again, completely oblivious to the toxicity of the stuff. And now you have these plasticizing agents that act as films that lock the octal methoxy cinnamate that lock the toxin right on the skin. So to guarantee that you're going to get absorption into your blood. And make no mistake about it, OMC goes into the blood. It's very, very easily absorbed. As I was saying before the break, that's why you're not supposed to put it on your baby's skin. I say you're not supposed to put it on anybody's skin. Not that you want to burn. This is very important. You don't want to burn. If your choice is using a toxic sunscreen or burning, I say use the toxic sunscreen. Sunscreen. Just get it off as soon as possible. And don't use it if you don't need it. There are these products that have these OMC kinds of substances built into the formula. So you have to use the toxic chemical. And then you've got this chemical stew on your skin. Do you know most, this is one of the major reasons why I formulated the truth. So you guys could get the advantages of active ingredients without having to expose yourself to toxicity. Almost all products that you get at the department store or at the drugstore are going to have some degree of toxicity simply because of the preservatives. Not to mention these sunscreens. And it's very likely that emulsifiers have a certain toxic profile as well. But definitely preservatives, definitely fragrances, and definitely sunscreens are big problems and we rub them on our skin multiple times a day. And nobody can tell me that that's not going to have an impact on, long -term, on our long-term health. 99% of breast tumors have parabens in the tissue, in the breast tumor tissue itself. That means the stuff is going through your skin, it's going into your blood, and it's depositing itself in tissue, added to the toxic load from foods and from the air that we're breathing and the water we're drinking and the food, uh, the, the milk and the fish and the dare. I mean, do we really want to expose ourselves to more toxicity? So so-called experts slather on the sunscreen, put it on again every 15 minutes because it rinses off, it goes off, the wind blows it off. No. Bad advice. Very bad advice. In addition to being toxic, it's also a xenoestrogen. So it's cytotoxic. That means it kills cells. If you take the sunscreen and put it on a cell, the cell's dying. Now, I know you got a surface on the skin and you're not actually hitting the living cells, but it's still not a good idea because some of it's going to get through that skin surface. And it also acts like estrogen. And it's readily absorbed. Make no mistake about it. And it gets into the blood. If it's readily absorbed in the skin and you use enough of it, it's getting into the blood eventually. All right. I'm Pharmacist Bang. Got lots more I want to say about the stuff. Sun protection. We'll talk about uh, oh, one of my all-time favorite ingredients that contains cinnamic acid. We'll talk about that on our coming episodes on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back with your phone calls right after this. Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and pharmacist ben, uh, brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Uh, we'll have search engines on both those websites. Also have blog posts and news stories at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And if you want to check out our Truth Skin Health products, you can head to truthtreatments.com. We have a special on our Truth Serum going till the end of the month. Some of you guys have said that the Truth Treatment products are too expensive. But you know what? They're not. When you factor in, when you factor in the, the fact 
that you're not getting any fillers or water or stuff that your skin's not using or doesn't need, every molecule in my Truth Serum and Truth Balm and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream and Truth Retinol 5% Gel, every molecule, every ingredient, every drop, every dose is pure active and functional ingredients. You're not getting any wasted. That's why you use pinhead size amounts. And that's why these products last a long time. Nonetheless, we have now have a trial size on our True Serum, and I think we'll probably have a trial size on a couple of the other products here in the near future. Trial size on the True Serum is uh, going to be $39 typically, but we have a special going for $29 if you want to try our True Serum. Made with lots of vitamin C, nearly 80%. Yes, nearly 80% of the product is vitamin C and not the cheapo stuff, the good stuff, the premium lipophilic stuff, the stuff I use personally and the stuff, only stuff I would use personally. You don't need a lot of ingredients on your skin. If you see a, an ingredient deck, now that you're an ingredient deck reader, if you see an ingredient deck that's got 20 or 30 or 50 or 70 products, there's one product, I, I don't want to call out their name, well, I will call out their name, it's called La Mer. It goes for $200 or $300 for an ounce. A ridiculous price. It has got over, a, I don't know, a hundred ingredients in there. The first ingredient is algae extract, seaweed. I'm telling you, this is a really nasty business. I don't blame you guys for being skeptical. I'm skeptical. I don't pay any attention to the ads and pay, uh, the things these people are saying on, uh, on infomercials and in the press about their skin latest and greatest ingredient. If it's not vitamin C and vitamin A, you're wasting your money. And if you're using a typical product and paying top dollar for 80% water, you're really wasting your money. All right. 844 is our number. Got lines open for you, and we'll get your calls in a minute. A couple uh, interesting stories here. This, is, uh, this one is from... Uh, from do, 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 the conversation. I'm not sure what that is, the conversation. Does caffeine cause dehydration? For a long time, people have been told that caffeine's a diuretic. But it turns out, caffeine is not really a diuretic. It doesn't necessarily increase the body's production of urine. It may make you, it may make, uh, provide some more fluid for you to, uh, to urinate out, to urinate out, but it's not like it is going to increase the production of urine necessarily. So if, you try, if you're avoiding caffeine because you think it's a diuretic, may not be so much a diuretic. And on top of that, when you're regular, regularly drinking caffeine or drinking coffee, you, create, you get a tolerance to this, this kind of diuretic effect where you're, or the more fluid you're drinking, the uh, more you're urinating. So you do develop tolerance to caffeine. If you're trying to avoid caffeine because of its diuretic effects, or if you're trying to use caffeine for its diuretic effects, you may be barking up the wrong tree, at least according to the conversation in this article. Now, I'm not saying caffeine's good stuff. It, it may or may not be. Some folks believe it's a nootropic, which means it helps improve brain health or brain function, and it may. It certainly, uh, in the short run, it can improve energy levels, but in the long run, mm, I'm not sure it's such great stuff. And uh, if you do too much, it can definitely be toxic. From the journal Scientific Reports, intestinal bacteria may protect against diabetes. Bingo! There's your link between the first point on the triangle of disease to the second point of the triangle of disease. Remember, the triangle of disease are the three points of, break, of bodily breakdown that are underneath all, all chronic degenerative diseases, all of them. The digestive system, the blood sugar system, and the adrenal thyroid complex. The thing about the triangle of disease is it's not just these three points that are under, it's not just that these three points underlie all chronic degenerative diseases, but it's that these three points break down sequentially. First, the digestive system breaks down. Then, once our body doesn't process energy correctly, and once we start dealing with the death of good bacteria in the gut, if we even have them, many people are born, many babies are born cesarean sections, so they don't even get the, the good bacterial bath. Many babies are not breastfed, so they don't get the, the nutrients that are responsible for the probiotics, for building the probiotics. So even presuming that you have probiotics, once you start getting into food allergies and food intolerances and gluten and the standard American diet, it's a short jump to dysbiosis, messed up gut, gut bacteria. And from there, you go into blood sugar problems. The second point on the triangle of disease. Once your blood sugar gets messed up, once you're on the high blood sugar, low blood sugar roller coaster, because we go low blood sugar, we get apple juice and orange juice, we go high blood sugar, the insulin comes out, we go back down to low blood sugar, we get more apple juice and orange juice, this high blood sugar, low blood sugar roller coaster. 
the uh, adrenal glands have to kick in to stabilize things with cortisol. The adrenal glands, over, uh, when they're overworked, eventually will slow down the thyroid. And from there, you have all chronic degenerative diseases. This is from the Sci journal Scientific Report. It turns out that a high concentration of something called propionic acid, this is a short chain fatty acid, a short fatty acid protects against type 2 diabetes. Now, I've talked about these short chain fatty acids in the past. They're extremely important for good health. They're made by good bacteria. What's more, they're made by the combination of fiber and good bacteria. Good bacteria eat fiber. They gift us. We give the good bacteria fiber to eat, and the bacteria gift us in return with these short-chain fatty acids. And there's three of them. One is, is vinegar, or the active ingredient in vinegar. It's called acetic acid, and this accounts for the multifunctional therapeutic properties of apple cider vinegar for diabetes, by the way. If you've ever seen these, you know, they have these 199 uses or 100 uses for apple cider vinegar. There's these books on apple cider vinegar, how it's good for everything from autism to, to diabetes to, to protecting against heart disease. If you wonder, well, how can apple cider vinegar, how can plain old vinegar have all of these amazing properties? It's got to be a scam. No, it's not. Apple cider vinegar is a short-chain fatty acid solution. It's an SCFA solution, and short-chain fatty acids are tremendously multifunctional including protection against blood sugar problems, as uh, per this, journal, this article in Scientific Reports that came out, uh, yes, a couple days ago, April 11th. Got another one here. Gut microbes contribute to age-associated inflammation. I'm telling you guys, this probiotic link to disease and to health is becoming more and more clear every day. Every day, literally, there's another study, there's another article that talks about the importance of good bacteria. Get on your nightly essence, use fiber, use fermented vegetables, Drink veggie juices, all of which can support the microbiome, the universe of bacteria that lives in our gut and is so important for our health, especially skin health. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Good morning, Christina in California. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, good morning, Mr. Fuke. Good morning. What's going on? Good morning. Um, you know, I've had pain and inflammation in both my knees since the beginning of March. Huh. And, uh, all of a sudden? Yeah, you know, it started gradually, and the, That's and the, the only yes, wear so and the tear. Only new thing, are, are you getting? You, you are know, you getting up in the, up in the years there? You don't have to be getting. You could be in your forties to to start to exhibit I, I, yes, some of these. I'm in my forties. I'm in a, like forty four. Yeah, you know, you don't have to be old to start. There are people have knee, getting knee replacements in their forties. Hang on, Christina, we got to take a break, yeah. okay? Yeah. Uh, and when yeah. we finish up and come back, I'll ask you a couple okay. questions. We'll help you out. Right. I'm Farm okay. Ben. You are listening to the Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Got some lines open. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We'll return with some more good health information on the Bright Side right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844 is our number. We're talking to Christina in California about inflammation. So let me ask you a couple questions, Christina. You there, ma'am? Sure. Yes, I am. Hi. So you're 44. Uh, just prox. are you carrying extra pounds? Yes. I Okay, so that's the first thing. If you got extra pounds, the okay. knees are a very, very weird kind of joint. They're very fragile relatively. They're not very fragile, but they're relatively, they bear a lot of load. If you're carrying mm -hmm. extra weight, you got to lose that. Uh, that puts okay. a lot of extra weight on the, on the knees. And you know, for folks who are contemplating knee replacement, hip replacement, please consider losing weight first because there's no minor surgeries. They make it sound like, oh, it's just routine. It's not routine. 90% of people who have surgeries are going to end up with adhesions and scar tissue, and that could be a serious problem, especially in the hip. You, you, or it's, you, go ahead. I'm sorry. You know, Mr. Fixino, you know, uh, I wanted to tell you that um, uh, before my extra poundage, um, I actually had arthroscopic surgery when I was uh, in my younger years. And might I was be actually, related. Yes. Uh, so, mm. so that was only in one and, and my right knee. But okay. Well, I, is the, the is your right knee worse? Yeah, the, no, actually, you know what? It's it's actually not as bad as my left one, but I haven't had any injury to my to my left. I mean, I mean, uh, it's not as bad as my yeah, not as bad as my left one, but um, if you haven't had hasn't had any trauma. If you haven't had any injury or any trauma, then it's probably load, weight. 
Now, it could be exacerbated okay. by inflammatory factors that are getting into the blood. So the chances are pretty good because you're, you know, I imagine you're subsisting on the standard American diet, at least partially. Uh, the chances are pretty good you're dealing with blood sugar problems. If you have weight gain issues uh, in your 30s and in your 40s where you never had a weight problem before, almost guaranteed you're dealing with messed up blood sugar regardless of what your diagnosis is. Oh, your blood sugar is fine, your doctor will tell you. But if you're gaining weight or you didn't, your blood sugar is not fine. It just means you're not, you haven't hit the threshold so you can be drugged as a diabetic, but it doesn't mean that your blood sugar is fine. So work on your blood okay. sugar, use the sweeties, okay. eat more fiber, use fiber after your meals, drink water after your meals or with your meals. That's another thing. You always want to drink water with your meals and after your meals, especially if you're dealing with, if you're eating sweets and bread and pasta and uh, carb rich yeah, no, foods. Not, yeah, any any kind of sugary foods, food. cereals, yeah. it's, it's somewhere you're getting, you're getting those kinds of foods. And they're everywhere. Ketchup has it. Mayonnaise has it. Okay. So it's everywhere. So drinking water can okay. help dilute your blood sugar. Use the sweeties. Get on yourself on the ultimate niacin. Make sure you're starting to uh, help your body rebuild cartilage with the glucogel caps, bone soup, the Fucoid Z. All of these have building, building properties. Go to my website, brightsidehealth.com. Get on bone broth protein. Maybe a scoop or two of bone broth protein a day in addition to your bone broth. Bone broth broth is great and bone broth protein is just the protein part. There's things that are in your soup that you're not going to get in the protein. The protein in the powder is more concentrated. So you need both of them. Aloe vera might help you. Uh, and then if there's really, if it's, if it's the tissue around the knee, you might want to consider body work. And don't underestimate, for anybody dealing with joint problems, don't underestimate the importance of stretching and actually putting resistance on the joints. The joints, resistance on the joints and stretching on the joints actually signals growth hormone and other factors that stimulate the production of new tissue. The body has a use it or lose it kind of mindset or it labors under a use it or lose it concept. It doesn't grow if it doesn't have to grow. The body is economical. So if you're not putting stretching or resistance kind of energy into the joint, it's not going to recover and it's not going to grow. Last but not least, a couple things anyway, liquid silica gel can help you. Hyaluronic acid capsules can help you, maybe 100 to 200 milligrams a day. And good old gelatin. Go get yourself some organic gelatin off Amazon.com, and that can be helpful, too. All right. Anything okay. else, Christina? Okay, so, yeah, I guess. What about so my inflammation? What do I do about that? That's what I'm telling you. Everything I was telling you. If you want to get rid of the inflammation okay. right away, you've got to get rid of what's causing the inflammation, which is the load, okay. the weight, and the sugar. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have any digestive okay. issues, that's going to compound things. So you might want to work on the digestive system. I didn't go into that. But you, mm -hmm. we're trying to eliminate the cause of the inflammation. If you're asking me what can I rub on there to make the inflammation go away, uh, it's going to be a little trickier. You might try the CM cream. But listen, Christina, mm -hmm. inflammation is your friend. You want okay. inflammation. You don't want to suppress it. You want to figure out what's causing it. Inflammation is okay. protection. Your body is inflaming around the knee because it's protecting itself. It's stressed. So you got to figure out what's stressing it, and that's where the sugar and the weight come in. Okay, sweetheart? Okay, so, okay, so real quick, doctor, is it okay? I mean, should I be worried? Like, uh, can I, not yet. I can still walk? And, yeah, and, and, not yet. And Go to take, start taking a yoga class. Stretch that out. You probably got all kinds of tightness in there, and that's making things worse. Especially if you haven't done any stretching or working out kinds of exercises. I know. I missed. I missed it. I missed my walk, and I missed my bike riding. Stretch. Just, just stretch while you're watching TV. Just stretch it out. Do yoga poses. Get on YouTube and look up yoga poses for the knee okay. and for the for the joint, uh, the, the quadriceps and the hamstrings, and the. Okay. Uh, and the lower leg, too. All right, I got to go, okay. Christina. Have a beautiful right, day. Thank Thanks for calling. Thank Appreciate you. it. All right, Curtis in West Virginia, good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side, Curtis. Well, good, good morning. I talked to you Monday about this off show, and I'll talk to you more about that when I get you on, on the telephone. Right now, it's on that subject of coffee. Hmm. Um, I read in a medical magazine not too long ago, caffeine is a pesticide. <laughs> that nature puts in the coffee to keep the bugs from eating the coffee when it's growing. That's, you that's might very... uh, help to line me up better than that. Maybe, well, maybe another side of that. But anyhow, as far as urinating goes, yeah. I drink about three to four quarts a day in 24 hours. And of I don't coffee? notice I pee any more with coffee than I do with regular water. <laughs> wait, wait a minute, Curtis. Hang on. You drink three to four quarts of water a day, you're saying? In 24 hours. Okay. And you're, not, you're saying you don't necessarily urinate more than if you're drinking a lot of coffee? Now, I, I, I'll drink, sometimes I'll drink two to three cups of coffee, but I, I don't really find myself urinating that much more. Yeah. But I That's drink nothing but are... water. I drink no sodas. I drink no beer. I drink nothing but sodas. I mean water and my own lemonade. 
And sometimes I make my coffee 50-50 water. Well, you got to get some BTT in there. I'll tell you what, Curtis. I'm going to, I'm going to do you a solid here. I'm going to do you a favor. Send me your email, and I'm going to put a, a Beyond Tangy Tangerine, a jug of it, out to you. So you start using some BTT with your water, okay? Okay. Now, where, where would I find you online at? Just send me an email, ben at ksco.com, and I'm going to send you a free jug of Beyond Tangy Tangerine 2.0 so you can experience it yourself. That way, when you're drinking your water, you can, you can beef it up with yeah. uh, some, some water-soluble nutrients. The more water you drink and the more you urinate, the more you're losing your B vitamins, the more you're losing your potassium, the more you're losing oh. your magnesium and calcium and, and water so- and vitamin C and water-soluble oh, wow. nutrients. So you've got to be careful about drinking a lot of water uh, because you don't want to lose those water-soluble nutrients. But you are in luck because I like you, Curtis. You're a smart guy. So I'm going to send you out a freebie, a free omega, a free BTT. Go ahead. See, I keep being, I keep being told by doctors, drink more, drink more, drink more. But well, I, tell I them about losing you. electrolytes when they say well, drink more. Right. I say, no, you're right. No, yes. you're right. And I'm going to right. back off of that. I'm going to yeah. back off of that. And I'm listening to you every day to <laughs> Thank you. satellite. I, I receive you real good. Thank you, Curtis. Are you out there in the mountains of West Virginia? Where do you live? Uh, Kaiser. Is that the mountains? If, I'll if, be getting to you later. If folks don't know how beautiful West Virginia is, let me tell you, that is one amazingly gorgeous state. Amazingly. Yep. Especially, amount, I mean, yep. mind-blowingly beautiful. All right, yep. Curtis, I'm going to let you go here. I'm going to drop you. I want to get one more call in, okay? Thank you, Thanks sir. for your call. Bye-bye. All right, buddy. Have a good day. All right, my friend Carl, what's going on? You get the last word. No, Ed, Benjamin, <laughs> part two to my questions yesterday of my two questions. I yes. think that this, this ongoing problem, and I've been talking to you about it ad, ad nauseum for the past three or four years, yes. this a reoccurring bizarre rash that I have on my fingers. I think that might be a virus that's trying to come out of my body. Maybe, because, but I, I'm always suspecting when I see rashes uh, on the skin, I'm always su- suspecting digestive issues. And from talking to you for the last few years, everything you always tell me about, you know, the stuff on your back and I think you said dental stuff, your teeth stuff, all that stuff yeah. could have to do with inflammation that's getting into your blood through the intestine. I mean, you sound, I can't say for sure, but I'd be sure fo- if it was me, I'd be focusing on leaky gut and patching up the gut. And if you haven't done the fast, the swear cleanse or a fast and then the elimination diet, Carl, the truth Raider, I'm telling you, I'm thinking that's where your issues are. And it can add years to your life, and it can help you get rid of some of these problems. At, at the very least, get on the nightly essence or some kind of probiotic supplement. But really, you want to see what's going on that's getting into your system, that's activating the immune system to, to kick in all of these weird inflammatory kinds of things. And it sounds like you've got a lot of those. And you're a young man, Carl. You're a young man of 50. You've got you to, uh, you know, it's too early for you to be falling apart like this. It does happen. <laughs> no, all no, right, it, my man. Really, it goes away, and it was gone for three months, and then all of a sudden it, it reoccurs again. I put always suspect or food, on it and, and it goes always. away, and then it comes back. Carl, <laughs> always, always, always suspect food, particularly if it's recurring in that way. It could be something that you're eating periodically, and you don't know. All right, I got to go, Great. Carl. That's the music, and that's the end of the program. Thanks for your call. Uh, the immune system, the skin, and the digestive tract, they all work together. Immune problems show up on the skin as well as they show up in the digestive system. The skin is the digestive system inside out. The digestive system is the skin outside in or vice versa. All right. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for listening, friends. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular, awesome day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We will talk to you all later. Bye for now.